wrestling week on access tv starts tuesday october 20th so the go home week as we call it tuesday you have your regularly scheduled final impact before bound for glory then immediately following at 10 p.m eastern time it's talking shop full keg so the good brothers are taking over access tv at 10 p.m eastern standard time thursday night is this is bound for glory which is going to be an in-depth look at all the stars and knockouts competing at bound for glory we're going to go inside their homes. We're going to talk to them. We're going to see how they're feeling as they get ready. So that premieres Thursday, October 22nd, also at 10 p.m. Eastern time following the Osbournes. And then um, Saturday night, a live countdown to glory. Live, 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 and live as it can be. Uh, Saturday, the final hour, 7 p.m. Eastern time before the 8 o'clock uh, Eastern time pay-per-view. So the final hour, we'll have panelists. Um, we'll have an exclusive match. There'll be so much happening on that final hour live, live on Access TV. So that's sort of everything. That's your roadmap, guys. Uh, between now and October 20th is when everything really gets started. And of course, it really kicks off this Saturday at Victory Road, which is going to be an absolutely incredible night. I think I've got everything. If not, you guys can yell at Ross. And uh, let's get to the to the meat of, of what we've all been talking about. And of course, Tenniel Dashwood will be in action this Saturday for the third time now facing Jordan Grace. It's one to one. And Tenniel, I'm going to kick this thing off. Um, it doesn't look very sunny there, but you do have sunglasses on. Um, can never trust anybody that wears sunglasses when it's not sunny. Um, but you don't also don't have your gloves on. But um, nonetheless. You didn't look all that excited when Caleb with the K said, uh, yeah, you guys can have a, another match. Do you not want to face Jordan Grace again? Well, first of all, I didn't ask your opinion on how I looked or um, if I needed to wear sunglasses right now or not. These are actually my custom to Neil Dashwood sunglasses, which maybe you should try getting a pair of. Um, anyway, uh, of course, I wasn't thrilled because for starters, I'd already beat Jordan Grace in the main event of my first match back in a long time. So I've already proved myself. I didn't need another match. I didn't need a second match. But now, of course, actually, after she had her way somehow, now we're here. And there was a little bit of a misunderstanding, I guess, with Caleb. But um, it's fine. It's totally fine. I'll take care of business and uh, do my thing. Do you think that you can uh, defeat Jordan now in a, in a third match and uh, after everything that she's I mean look I, I, Madison Rain has mentioned it on commentary more than once when you're in there with uh, Jordan Grace it's a fight it's a battle and you've now experienced this twice right <laughs> come on Josh give me some good questions here like do I think I can beat Jordan Grace of course am I worried no I've already beat her in the main event what more do I have to do come on I mean, she did, I mean almost, you do. I, she did almost break my back, if you saw that one. Um, but look, I'm still standing, so can't beat Well, me. look, so many folks follow you on social media. I mean, millions. You have the most amount of followers uh, of anybody, and that's tough for me to say because I might be in second place. Um, but it, 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 where are you right now in the world? Because you're always somewhere exciting and, and on a beach and, and doing some amazing things. Where, where can we find – where in the world is Tenille Dashwood today? Well, not that it's any of your business, but for everybody else, um, I'm actually, well, I'm on location right now because, well, um, the best time of the day to do shoot is coming up. So I am going to make sure I get my shoot in for the day. Is Caleb there? Caleb with a K? Can we say hi to Caleb? No, we can't. Oh, fair enough. Okay, Ross, uh, that's about it for me. I'm going to stick around though, because I think this is going to be a fun press pass and I don't want to miss anything, but, uh, I see that we've got members of the media with their hands raised, ready to get some questions in. And uh, I'll let you take it over from here, buddy. All right. Well, thanks, Josh. And uh, Josh, just, you know, I'm guessing her, her sunglasses probably more, more valuable than your entire wardrobe. Just a hunch. Uh, so yeah, media, if you guys got questions, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, we'll get to you as fast and as quickly as we can. We have a lot of people here today. So we'll apologize in advance if we don't get to everybody, but Hopefully uh, Simon's going to work the uh, magic and get everybody in there. So Simon, who are we going to go to first? Okay, so first off, we've got um, Jerry from Sports Matters. So Jerry, I'm going to bring you in. Just start your video when you come in, unmute yourself, and then ask your question. Thank you, Simon. Appreciate it. Hiya, Tanito Sings. I just want to talk about the... Um, 
back in the day with Lance Storm. Can you tell me how instrumental he was to your career and uh, how much of an impact he had on you? Starting with a good question. Josh, take notes. Um, Lance Storm <laughs> was um, such a huge part of my career and me getting to where I am today. Um, you know, starting in Australia, wrestling seemed uh, so far away, you know, this big world of wrestling and no one had kind of worked out how to break down that barrier to kind of make it in the scene. And um, I took it upon myself to go move to Canada and train with Lance Storm. So he was the first person that gave me that professional training and that foundation. Um, and then from there, I went on to obviously big, big things. Definitely. And just last of all, Tanil, obviously there's a big match coming up. You're looking to make it two and one. Is it fair to say you're going to challenge for the, for the women's title straight after this because it's well overdue in my opinion? Well overdue, but you know, I've already, yes, for starters, it is, um, that is the, well, I mean, I have a lot of things to do, but of course, Gianna is in my sight and, uh, or that championship, should I say, who knows who will have it by that time, but I've already beat Gianna before, so I'm not really worried about that. It's more just when it's right for me, when it's the right time for me. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you, Gary. Um, next up, we have Lee Walker um, coming in now. Hey, how are you doing? Am I on? Hello. Go ahead, Lee. Oh, I can't even see myself. Uh, Tanil, there's been 54 reigns in the in the Women's Knockouts Championship with 23 different knockouts holding the championship. Not to look past Jordan Grace this Saturday, but knowing those numbers, what do you think you're going to have to do in order to be number 24? To become the 24th knockout champion? Is that your question? Yes. What's it going to take to be the 24th uh, knockout champion? Have you seen me in the ring? Have you seen my career? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm the most <laughs> successful woman in the knockouts division. I have the biggest following of anyone in the company. And not to mention my resume. So it kind of speaks for itself. All right. Oh, well, uh, thanks for having me. Cool. Thanks, Lee. Um, next up, we've got Gillian Cohen from Worldwide Sports Network. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? All right, awesome. So, to me, five weeks ago, you made your return to Impact on September 1st, coming off a couple months hiatus. Um, what has kept you motivated the most upon your return to Impact? Well, quite honestly, it was getting frustrating sitting back and listening to people like Diona toot her own horn about how she's the best technical women's wrestler in the world. And, you know, it just got kind of old. So... Um, I thought it was time that I just came and took the spotlight back. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Joey Carney from the Angle podcast. Joey, you need to unmute. How are you guys? Joey Carney here from the Angle Podcast. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. I feel sorry for the uh, background noise. Uh, Tanil, you've been involved uh, with a variety of women's divisions in your career, bringing success, I mean, everywhere you've gone so far. And currently, to me, the knockouts division is a standout. What uh, about this current knockouts division intrigues you the most? And how do you plan on raising the bar while you're there? First of all, how do I get a background like that? I should be having like a <laughs> background that says all about me with like hands pointing at me like this. That's what I need. Uh, can you guys write that note down to for the next time? Um, Ross, write that down. I write did. That down. Yeah. I mean, you're really not prepared for this. And I'm taking time out of my day. Um, okay, so there's women's division. I have had, I mean, I've wrestled for the top companies around the world. Um, and I've got to know a lot of people in a lot of divisions. And I will say that Impact is 
the best division currently. And I would say that it is quite obvious that the women there, they bust their ass. They love wrestling and it's the passion oozes out of them when they're in the ring. Um, I, I like a bit of competition, you know? Um, and I like people to pride themselves in what they do and be good at it so that when I beat them, it just makes me look that much better. Of course. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Louis from Wrestle Talk. Hi, Tanil. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, obviously, you work for Impact now, and Impact doing some great stuff at the moment. So, for people that just watch, I guess, don't watch Impact Wrestling or have seen your work elsewhere. Firstly, why why should they tune into what you're doing? And secondly, why should they tune into what Impact Wrestling is putting out and the content that they're um, putting on? And then, obviously, as we head into Bound for Glory next month. Well, I mean, it's pretty clear that Impact is definitely um, with the times right now, and they they've made some huge moves, some big signings, um, and it's it's literally the show to watch right now, and mainly because of me. I'm on the show. So, I mean, people would be silly not to tune in. If they, I get messages literally every day, um, come wrestle here, why don't you wrestle here anymore? Why don't you do this, why don't you do that? Why don't you just watch Impact Wrestling and you get to see me there, you get to see me do my thing. That would be the smart move for everyone. And I mean, the show is just killing it right now. So why wouldn't you watch? Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Um, next up, guys, we have Brandon Turner from The King of Wrestling. Hey, how are you? Can you hear me now? Hello. Hi, thank you for doing this. Uh, I was just wondering, since you come back to Impact, and Impact has one of the best women's divisions, if not the best, who are the top three opponents you're looking to return? Mm, that's a hard message to make out because you were cutting out. I think you're asking me I'm who, sorry. who my top uh, top people I would want to wrestle would be. Top, yeah, top three that you'd like to wrestle since coming back to Impact. Mm, good question. I mean, I could list maybe more than that because there's quite a few of the, the women in the knockouts division I haven't even wrestled yet so it, I mean it's there's a lot of exciting stuff to come uh I will say Su Young is very intriguing to me but she's literally crazy so I might stay away from her for a while but um well, let's not say the obvious. Kylie Ray, I've never stepped in the ring with, and I, I know that people want to see that. So that is definitely uh, one of the top ones. Jordan is kind of getting old at this point. Um, should have been done with her a week ago. And uh, But if I could say someone else, I would say, well, of course, Diona Perrazzo. But I've already beat her too. So <laughs> the next time I face her, it'll be more fun because I already know I'm going to win. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you and Kylie Ray for sure. That's one of my dream matches, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Brandon. Um, next up, we have Kristen Ashley. Hi, sorry about that. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, so... Uh, we know you're very busy with Impact, but what's your status with the indie scene? Will we be seeing you at any indie shows soon? Mm, good question. Uh, I would say, unfortunately, with COVID, it makes things a little tough right now, um, especially outside of the US. So I would say if things come a little more normal again soon, whatever that normal will be. Um, hopefully I will be doing independent shows outside of the US. And that is always, I mean, everyone knows that I love my travels and I'm a world traveler and, you know, any place I can go and wrestle around the world, I will endeavor to do that. So as soon as I can, 
um, independent promotions outside of the US. Get ready for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. Um, and talking of around the world, we're now gonna go to France for a question from our friend Stephanie from Steel Chair Magazine. Okay, can sometimes take a little while for the connection. I haven't got all day. Simon, you better move on or you're gonna be in the same okay. category as Josh. We're gonna move on, okay. So while we wait for Stephanie to come through, I'm gonna to go to Bill Pritchard from wrestledome.com. Hey, Bill, if you can unmute yourself. Perfect. Hello. Go ahead, Bill. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You have to speak up a little bit. Lost insane thing. Sorry about that. So uh, you had a, a dancing gimmick before. You had the Emelina gimmick before. So you're adapt to, you know, creative challenges and... We've seen over the past few months and years, Impact have really, you know, other talent has come to Impact saying that they really give props to the people in charge now for giving them creative freedom. So since you already built your own character with the all about me catchphrase and, you know, your, your personality, is there another deciding factor as far as what made you sign a contract with Impact for this current run that you're just starting? There were many reasons why I, I signed a contract with Impact. Um, like I said, the women's division is literally on fire. Um, they make some big moves, smart moves, as far as the wrestling industry goes. And um, other than me having things I still plan to do and prove and you know, enjoy in wrestling, the Impact um, management made it very clear how important I was for their company. Um, and it is so nice to be appreciated and respected and valued and that when it comes down to it i want to work in a place with good people who have creative freedom who are happy and positive about what they're doing and in turn deliver a good show thank you awesome thank you bill and um, we now have stephanie in with us so stephanie if you unmute yourself and ask your question yeah, I'm sorry, I had a little difficulties to, to connect, but uh, I'm in. <laughs> Hi, Tania. Uh Nice to talk to you. Um, hi, Dr. Ross. Hello. <laughs> um, uh, I had a question for you about um, the TNA fans that you were, Tania. Um, um When you were in Australia and younger and... Uh, uh, training to become a wrestler. Were you watching TNA? Were you a fan of it? Um, uh, who were your favorite wrestlers, of course? And also, uh, who would you, from this period of time, uh, with so many comebacks over the last few months, and um, want to know which knockouts you would uh, make comeback uh, if you could? Thank you. What was the last part? Which knockouts? I didn't catch the last part there. I think which ones would you bring back to Impact? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, first off, of course, I've watched Impact and Impact's been around for a long, long time and so have I. So I have definitely watched Impact over the years. Uh, I, if I could bring back someone from the past. Um, well, I mean, not too, not too long ago, but I would lo have loved to wrestle Gail Kim. Um, and unfortunately don't know if that will ever happen, but if I get my way, maybe it will. And I do get my way quite often. So I might work on that actually. Um, what was the other parts of your question? There was like four, I was like a four part question. 
I get paid extra to answer all the parts of the questions, right? Yeah, I was just asking you what the, the fan you were, the, the, the wrestler you loved um, from TNA. And um, yeah, w which fan of TNA you were? Okay, well, I guess I've kind of uh, addressed that. With Gail Kim, let's just go with that. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, next, we're going to Jim Varsaloni from the Miami Herald. Hello. There Jim. we go. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm still old school. Here we go, at least I have the audio going. Anyway, so Tennille, how has women's wrestling evolved since you started, and especially in Australia? Well, when I started wrestling in Australia, um, there were a few smaller independent companies uh, over the different states. And we're all kind of this, like a big wrestling community. And I'd say it's still the same these days. Um, wrestling for us over there, um, we know we, people think Australia is a small place, but we are on this island that's kind of far from everywhere else. So, you know, to, to think of making it onto worldwide TV wrestling for a major company was kind of unheard of at that point. Um, so I would say it kind of started with people, uh, with myself, being one of the first ones to venture out overseas to get the professional training. Like I said, with Lance Storm, it's one of the best people I've ever worked with and still a good friend of mine. Um, and from there, I noticed people started to realize that what seemed impossible was actually possible. Um, so, you know, there was definitely women um, making the travels overseas, doing work with companies like Shimmer, um, and getting and getting noticed in that sense, but you know, if you look now um, to see how many of the Australians are signed to major promotions, it just goes to show that it's just leaps and bounds from what it ever used to be or what we ever thought was possible. And lastly, for me, Caleb with a K, is he even getting paid at least minimum wage? Why is that any of your business? What Caleb gets paid? I think I think the guy deserves to get paid. I mean, he does such a good job. He does a good job. Yes, of course he does. Of course I pay Caleb. Come on. All right. Very good. Thank you, Tanil. Thanks, Jim. And I'm um, going to New Zealand for David Dunn from NZPWI. everyone. Good morning. Um, Tanil, it's somewhat more commonplace now, but you are, at least in my mind, quite an early adapter of the idea of having, um, having a YouTube channel and creating some content that's more than just what you're doing inside the ring. So I was wondering if you could talk just a little bit about um, why it's important to you to have that creative process, that creative outlet, and um, what sort of inspired you to jump online, make taste of Tanil, and do the recipes, do the travel vlogging, do all that great stuff. Wow. Um. You're a smart man for starters because um, you have a good question and you've done your research. Um, yes, I was one of the first people to, for starters, use my real name uh, in the wrestling industry. And then I went and ventured out creating my own YouTube channel before this, this little craze that's happening right now. I've been doing it for years um, and I, well, for many reasons, but I thought it was important to give back to the fans, to, show my life outside of the wrestling ring because obviously so much more goes into what I do as a performer than just turning up in the ring. So I wanted to share my outlook on my health and my fitness and things I enjoy doing. Um, and especially now more than ever, I think it's really important to share my positive outlook on things, you know, like my quotes that I use. Um, I love sharing those with people because I often get messages back saying, oh, that's exactly what I needed to hear today. Or, you know, how much someone appreciates me sharing my, 
my journey and my, for instance, my skin condition I spoke publicly about on my YouTube channel, um, sharing healthy recipes, or even just kind of motivating people to go out and live their life to the fullest. Because oftentimes people procrastinate, people talk about doing big things and don't. Uh, or sometimes people just need a little kind of kick in the butt, you know, um, to realize, hey, what's holding me back? Why am I not doing the things that make me happy? So I think it's really important to encourage um, people to go out and do those things and the, the mental health side of it, to talk about things openly and to encourage people and be positive. And all of that ties back into my YouTube and why I share what I do with my fans. Okay. I will say I did just upload another um, travel video. My Jamaica trip is now online. It's youtube.com forward slash taste of Tennille. Cool. And next we have um, Darren Pouchowitz. And I think Darren's from um, a website called The Hype. Hi, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, great. So Tennille, besides yourself, who is the most underrated person on the Impact roster? And will we ever see a Taste of Tineal cookbook? I like how you said besides myself, because that's clearly going to be the answer. Yeah. <sighs> now I have to like think about somebody else. Let me go with the cookbook uh, question. It's hard for me to think like outside of me, you know, because um, it is all about me. Uh, the cookbook is a great uh, question. I would love to have a cookbook one day. Um, but I will say I'm also kind of focusing on the travel aspect of Taste of Tennille right now as well. So I am open to ideas. If you have people that want to contact me, they can reach out to my email. Um, it is bombarded with requests, producers, everything right now. So I'm open to ideas and I'm not against the cookbook by any means. Great. Thank you for your time. Cool. Thank you, Darren. Um, next up, we have Gary Cassidy from Inside the Ropes. Hi, Tanil. Thank you so much for taking the time. So a lot of people have mentioned the knockouts division. For me, probably the best women's division in the world. But I want to ask, you know, there's so many main eventers there. It speaks to how Impact values talent. You've got, you know, yourself, your opponent at the weekend, and then, of course, Deonna, Kylie Ray probably the most stacked division in wrestling. Is there any frustration that if you were with maybe any other promotion in the world, you would be probably the one top person there, but at Impact, it's such a stacked roster. And just additionally to that, would you like to see the, the Knockouts Tag Team Championships return? Uh, I don't know if we're going to be friends or not, because you kind of started by complimenting me but then went back into saying like that I am not the focus or the best in this decision it's kind of confusing because I clearly am I would never um, say such a thing <laughs> there is some good competition you did mention their names but um it's still uh this is the focus you know like right here um what was the next part of your question uh, would you like to see the Knockouts Tag Team Championships and Impact? And if so, who would you pick to be your tag team partner? I would. I would absolutely love to see that. I wouldn't really be part of it because I don't need a partner or, um, you know, it's it's just solely me, you know. But um, I'm happy for the other women to go after things like that while I go after the championship and take that. Definitely. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Um, next up, we've got Bison from Total Nonstop Impact UK. Hello, Tanil. Hello. Hi, it's Bison here from uh, Total Nonstop Impact UK. Um, it's interesting because uh, obviously you've not been around for uh, several months now. We understand why with regards to the COVID-19 situation. Um, however, over those few months, we have seen the Impact roster grow to such a stature, um, you know, the Knockouts roster I'm talking about, uh, grow to such a stature that you coming back the way that you did, do you not feel that maybe you were just sort of kind of in the forefront when you don't necessarily deserve it at this time? Sorry, who let you on on this call? Hello, Josh, uh, Ross. Okay. 
So are you saying are you saying you don't think I deserve it, or I, I'm saying obviously you think you deserve it, definitely. But you haven't been around for the past what four or five months. Uh, we've got some incredible talents on the roster that are currently have been putting in the work and showing off how incredible that they are. Surely they deserve maybe a little bit more of the spotlight than yourself at this time. Would you not agree? You're funny. You're a funny guy. You know, um, I don't agree. I disagree with you strongly. Um, I have been working actually a lot. My job is hard. Actually, I have more jobs than most of the women there because I, on the side, have photo shoots to do. I have headshots to shoot. I have video content to do. I have travels to do. I have not just been sitting around like you might think. And obviously, my resume in the wrestling ring speaks for itself. So, no, I do not agree with that. Um, I do deserve the spotlight always, even if I wasn't doing anything. And coming off the first week back where I did main event the show, I also won. So I have earned my spot. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Bison. Um, now Thank we have, um, we've got people around the world watching this on Facebook and they've also sent in questions. Um, and Ross has got one of those for you now. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Tanil, this question was kind of just answered. Uh, we have two, it's a two part question. Uh, it came from Cody. He wants to know, if you had to pick a tag team partner from our roster, who would it be? And then he also wanted to know what, what has been the absolute highlight of your career? Oh. I'm going to pick Caleb with a K, my tag team partner. And um, I mean, there have been a number of highlights. For me, some of the best things were wrestling in different countries around the world, um, you know, because that's, it's been part of uh, my, discovering my love and my passion for travel. Um, and through that has come, you know, so many collaborations, so many photo shoots, um, working with the resorts, all this, these crazy, amazing things that I'm doing. Um, so I've definitely loved uh, the travel aspect of my career. Um, I would say the biggest, the biggest, well, the biggest highlight is yet to come because I'm yet to be a knockouts champion. But time is ticking. Perfect. That question came uh, Facebook from uh, LA. So we'll uh, move on to the next media question. Simon, who we got? We got Frank Mandeloni from the Last Minute Wrestling Podcast. Hi, Tanil. Hi, guys. Thanks for the opportunity. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tanil, you've been such a, a great advocate for psoriasis uh, throughout the years. Can you just give a little tip to anybody, any athlete, any wrestler who has to deal with this kind uh, of, of problem or skin condition? I've actually done a YouTube show, a couple of YouTubes about this. So it, you just look up Taste of Tennille on YouTube. Um, I've, I've spoken with professionals on there. I've recommended books, uh, Instagram pages, uh, people that helped me in my journey. What I will say, if anything, one of the biggest takes from all the experiences I've had is to try not to medicate and mask or cover the problems you're having, but to try work out the why why these things are happening and get to the root cause. And, and that for me is, and I believe for most people is um, all to do with diet and the things we're putting in and around our surrounding, in our bodies and around in our environment. So um, it's so important to learn about what we're eating and like it's, I can't stress it enough. I'm actually doing a course um, to become an integrative health practitioner so I'll be a health coach uh, soon enough. And in turn, I can not only help myself, but help my, fam my family, my friends, and hopefully my fan base as well. Because I get so many questions about this and I would love to help people recover and heal. That is great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you, Frank, your excellent question. Um, next up, we have Vic to Villain from Hill Pops and Cheap Shots or, or Chair Shots even.
Well, Vic, if you can ask your question. Yes. How you doing, Tanil? Thanks for the time today, guys. Appreciate it. Um, your career has been well documented and your arrival at Impact has been very well received. What does a victory this Saturday over Jordan in such a marquee feature match do um, for your career? And what does it mean to you at this point? I guess some people apparently don't think I've, you know, earned my spot or coming back trying to take the spotlight, uh, which is bizarre to me. Um, but I guess that would cement the fact that I do deserve to be where I am. Um, I already proved that in the main event where I won. So it's just, this will be the end of an, a very annoying chapter where Jordan Grace won't stop following me around and stalking me on social media. Um, she clearly wants to follow in my footsteps with all the photo shoots she's doing, all the things she does, but I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of jealousy or whatever it is, but I'm kind of over it at this point. So I plan to kind of end things on Saturday um, in this now third match we're having. And then I can go on to bigger and better things, you know, things that make me happy, um, which is the most important thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. Like the championship, for instance. Likewise, likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, next up, we have Michael Cavanici. Hi, Tanil. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. So I have a question for you. You've been wrestling now for 15 years. I mean, you know, it's a long time and you've had a great career. How do you, um, you know, uh, keep it fresh for yourself when it comes to, you know, your moves in the ring, uh, how you approach training and staying healthy? I mean, are you constantly trying to figure out ways to shake things up when it comes to your offense and your defense? Yeah, I mean, I've literally... I wanted to be a wrestler since I was a little girl. It's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And I have watched it, studied it, performed, um, trained for, like you said, over 15 years actually now. Um, so, which is why I am a professional wrestler, why I am where I am and why I have wrestled for the top companies around the world. Um, I am constantly working on my look trying to make sure that I'm in shape and healthy, more importantly, because, you know, some people look, some people look great, but not necessarily healthy. So that is key. Um, I think that uh, a lot of that has input on how I perform and, and how I, you know, stay on top of my game and make sure I'm delivering. So I definitely do my research, my opponents, I watch the product and I, do what I need to do to make sure that I'm always the best. Thank you. Simon, you muted. Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, Miss Dashwood, you've already faced uh, Jordan Grace twice. And we're going on to the third. It was kind of answered in the previous question, but are you worried that your bag of tricks is now empty or do you have more up your sleeve? My bag of tricks is never empty. Come on. I kind of just answered all that. But um, no, I'm not worried in the slightest because I am Tanil Dashwood. <laughs> um, Jordan, well, I will say she is quite aggressive in the ring. She has um, tried to injure me a number of times now. Um, I am obviously resilient, you know? I do all, <laughs> a lot of chiropractic since, since last week, I will say, but um, I'm taking care of myself and my body and I'm doing all the right things. And, you know, Jordan, while she is a great competitor and she gives me a run for my money, I'm not worried about this match, I've got it under control. Um, I guess you can say, I always have a plan. Thank you. Cool, thank you, Jeffrey. Next up, we have Jake from the Pro Wrestling Post. Uh, 
Hello. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, Tenille, uh, after Jordan Grace won the Knockouts Championship back in February, she did an interview with Pro Wrestling Post Editor-in-Chief Mark Madison. She actually listed your name as the biggest threat to the title upon your return. Now that you're back and healthy, is Jordan the perfect competitor to prepare you for your first Knockouts Championship run? Yes, she is. And that's why I have been kicking her ass. <laughs> But I will say she's very smart because she did mention me. She knows that I'm a threat. And, and that's why she has somehow managed to get herself a second match when she wasn't deserving of a second match. And like I said, now we're in this, this position where we have a third match coming up on Saturday. So she's a good, um, what do you call it? Like a, a stepping stone, I guess. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm ready to be done with her and to move on to bigger things. And with that second match, uh, you did lose to her in a, via a chokehold. So what are you going to do in the third match to not ha make that happen again? i sorry, are you there? You're just cutting out a lot. So I was I, saying that in the, in the second match. I can't seem to hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, Thank you, Jake. Very <laughs> oh, no. Oh, we lost him. Lost him. Um, next up, we have Mike Gilbert from Combat Republic. Hello, everybody. Uh, Tania, my question is uh, in regards to Bound for Glory. Uh, Diana Perrazzo and uh, Kylie Ray are scheduled to face off for the Knockouts Championship. Who do you see winning that uh, fight, and who would you like to face for the championship after that? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I guess I don't really care. They're both, they're both annoying in their own ways. So... Um, but I will say I have beat Diona, so maybe that's like the easier option. I haven't faced Kylie Ray. Obviously, I know I would win, but I haven't faced her in the ring before. So while it would be kind of like exciting, like a first time matchup, um, just Diona is just maybe the easier out. I don't know. I'll see how I'm feeling at the time um, when it comes to it. But well, really, whoever ends up with the title, that's who it's going to be anyway, whenever I'm ready. So it doesn't really bother me too much. So you don't have a prediction for the winner of that match? Um, I'm going to go with Diona. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Mike. Um, next up, we have James from that 90s wrestling podcast. Oh, James, we can't hear you. Can't hear you, James. Okay, while James tries to figure out his audio, I'm going to bring in Kevin from putting you over. Can you guys hear me? We can, Kevin. Awesome. Awesome. Um, first of all, I want to say, Tennille, I'm sorry that uh, Impact Wrestling is making you take on Jordan Grace again. You, you've already beaten her and proved yourself. But um, I'm a father of three daughters, uh, the Daughters of Anarchy, and uh, I can't think of anybody else that would be a better role model for them. So uh, what advice do you have to give to uh, young female, uh, you know, that females that want to be wrestlers? And Second part of the question, uh, what should I cook them for dinner tonight? I, I can't see a picture, but I, it's not a great question. I really, I really like you. Um, I even have sunglasses on. Oh, that's great. It's great. I wish I could see a picture right now, but um, well, I'm flattered. First of all, um, that's very sweet. And say hi to your daughters for me. Um, I... I guess what I would say is when I was young and had this dream of becoming a wrestler, it seemed so far away and impossible. Um, but I never doubted my 
ability to make it possible. I didn't think about what could go wrong. I guess I just thought about what I wanted to do and I went after it. And I, I guess you could say things worked out pretty well. So if I could give some advice, it would be to, if you want something in life, go after it, give it your all because it's what seems impossible can be possible in the end. And for me, that is crazy. I never pictured myself after all I had been through, you know, living in Australia, not knowing how to make it overseas and dealing with my skin condition and all these issues I had growing up. I never pictured being in the position that I'm in now, but somehow it happened. So, and not somehow, I will say with drive and determination and the desire to succeed um, and a positive outlook on life. So that is really important. Um, but just go after what you want to go after. Well, thank you. Sorry, my camera didn't work. I think it's working now. I don't it is know. working now. I love the yeah, shade. Maybe? Although yeah, I don't exactly. think that my custom to Neil Dashwood shades, but you can order them still, so well, it's fine. Are they prescription? Because I need prescription ones. Um, sure they are. Thank you for your time. Cool. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, James, do you want to give it a go, see if we can hear you? Um, I don't think we're going to hear from James, but I'll make sure you ask first next time, James. We're going to go to Dean Connolly next. Hi, Tanil. Hello, Dean. Two part question for you. So obviously this Saturday at Victory Road, it's you against Jordan Grace. So. <clears throat> excuse me so what stipulation would you add into that match and the second part is caleb river k drops you into this match so if you lose at victory road does that mean the new saying i've come up with hell have no fury like a tinio scorned will apply after the match oh i like that i like that well that will definitely apply we can already assume that um and oh, what kind of stipulation well I say we should do like a photo shoot first and whoever gets the most likes on social media um, actually can choose whether they want to have the match or not and whether it's necessary. And of course, <laughs> I'm gonna win that because I have the biggest social media following and we don't need to have this match because I already know that I'm better and everyone else knows that. It's just, it's like, it's like Groundhog Day. Cool, thank, thank you very much. Um, next up, we're gonna go to the Working Fans Wrestling Podcast. Um, hello can you hear me i can hear you. all right awesome Tanil, thanks for uh doing this and my question is uh obviously fans are so important uh in the wrestling business and in the matches and with no fans how is that uh causing maybe some negatives and maybe even some positives when you're performing well it's definitely different with no fans and I will say I I love having the fans there because you know I feed off that energy um, um but I will say as well when I'm out there when I'm in the ring I'm in my own little world you know it's it is literally all about me so I don't necessarily realize when they're not there either okay well thank you very much for your time appreciate it thank you, thank you very much um next up we have Miranda Morales and I'm going to bring Miranda in now Miranda, if you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Unmute yourself, Miranda. All right. Apologize for that. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Tanil. The Knockouts division has been well known for their series of stipulation matches, uh, anywhere from the Six Sides of Steel to the Last Rights match uh, to most recently the first ever Knockouts uh, Iron Man match. 
is there a stipulation match that you would like to be a part of uh, as part of the knockouts division? I mean, I don't, do you, do you think, let me ask you a question. Do you think that um, these stipulation matches are a way to, for them to try and prove themselves? Is that what they're for? Because I don't need to prove myself. So I don't really need a stipulation. That's that's very true. I think in those history cases, uh, it's a way to prove yourself, uh, but also it's a way to take advantage of a situation uh, and also inflict more punishment on your opponent. Uh, is that something that you're interested in? That might be fun, actually, now that you mention it. Um, hmm. I guess that part would be all right, but um, I did have an idea just a second ago, you know, about like some kind of like photo shoot or something maybe there's like a new stipulation i can come up with i'm gonna have to have a think about that one yeah yes so as far as you know in the ring um i am one of the best women's professional wrestlers in the world so i don't have to prove myself and i certainly don't need to uh ruin my body and hurt myself in the process so some some things are a little silly in my opinion and not necessary Fair enough. thank you very much Thank you. Anna, thanks for your call. Uh, Tanil, I know you told me I had to have you done uh, within one hour for the photo shoot, proper sunlighting. I totally respect that. Uh, well, the is and I will need to get ready. You got time for three more questions? Make it quick. Cool. So, okay, we're going we're gonna to do a last shoot. I had so many people on the call tonight. That if anyone I haven't got to, please just email me and Ross. And we can make sure you go first next time because we just had too many people trying to ask tonight to try and get it all done, which is which is incredible. Um, the next, I'm going to go to Dane from Hooked on Wrestling. Hi, Neil. Thanks for your time. I think you are worthy of your current position on the card. Um, so my question was. Uh, over 15 years you've been performing, who would you say so far has been your kind of best rival and how does Jordan Grace compare to them? Um, well, if I'm talking about my previous years, is that what you mean? Yes. Um, first of all, smart to make friends with me at the start of the call. And <laughs> I would say some of my greatest rivals, well, we're talking back to my run, uh, for instance, with NXT, I would say uh, my greatest rival was Paige. And some of my matches I had that basically started the women's revolution uh, were against her. So that for sure would be one. And I also uh, really enjoyed, and I know the, the fans enjoyed my um, rival with Asuka. And we you know one of my favorite matches and performances was NXT TakeOver in London. So, I mean, there's there's probably many more I could mention too, um, but coming to Impact, uh, I knew that uh, Jordan, although she is annoying, um, she is one of the best women's wrestlers that I've faced. Uh, so you know, it's it's exciting and nice to have fresh competition and to know that um, they are one of the best that you're going up against. And um, like I said as well, one of the other people that I have never faced that I would like to is Kylie Ray for the same reason. She is one of the best, not just women really, but performers and wrestlers uh, in the world. So I'm looking cool. forward to that. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dane. Um, next up, we have Brad Marcus. Do you have to unmute? There we go. Hi, it's Neil. Sorry about that. This is Brad from Pro Wrestling Junkies. I have a question for you. How has your life changed for the positive working for a company like Impact as opposed to the previous companies you've worked for outside of the ring? How has my life changed outside of the ring? Yes. I guess the schedule suits me great because I'm a I'm able to do a lot more of my 
you know, my social media, my travels and my photo shoots and, and all of those things that I love doing, my Taste of Tennille show on YouTube. It gives me uh, a way better schedule for all of that. Um, and a positive mindset, you know, to be happy about what I'm doing and enjoy it and enjoy the people I'm working with. And Well, I think we just lost to Neil. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, I, I guess, uh, Brad, maybe she didn't like your question. I, I I'm good, sorry, I got to rethink I thought it was a good one. question. Uh, I think we, we can wrap it up with that one. We only had one more question. Uh, Tanil, I thank you, even though you're not here. Uh, media, I apologize for the little cutoff. I'm not sure what happened on that one. Next week, we are going to be talking tag team wrestling. And just a reminder, as Josh mentioned at the start of this call, Confirmed for Bound for Glory, the tag team titles are on the line. A four-team matchup with uh, Motor City Machine Guns defending against Ace Austin, Madman Fulton, the Good Brothers, and the North. So next week, we are going to be talking tag team wrestling right here on the Press Pass podcast. I appreciate your time very much. We will talk to you next week.